We had an SRO officer. I'll never forget this look on her face. We get a intercom to the whole school saying, code red lockdown, get to a classroom immediately. This episode I've been so excited about, but I've also been kind of nervous about Mm -hmm. because I'm very, I know when some people think of police officers, some people have very strong opinions. Yes. Agreed. Yes. Yes, What are your thoughts on that? In general? Yeah. Okay. I think people used to put police officers on a pedestal to Uh a degree, Mm -hmm. but in the last um, five, 10 years, it's been going downhill for a lot of reasons, right? Because we have phones. We have social media. Mm -hmm. And now one thing goes wrong on the internet, it just, it's a wildfire. And I think people kind of put police officers in kind of in a bad light because there's like that one or two police officers that just aren't cutting it. Yeah. I talk about that in a lot of my episodes, you know, Mm -hmm. whether we're talking about teachers, hairstylists, nurses, police officers, whatever it is, that I feel like there's so many people that go into these professions because they genuinely want to do good. Right. But then a few people are there and they're not, they should not be there. They're not supposed to be there. They're not great people. Right. And they just create this stereotype. Um, and I know like I, I felt it really hard when it came to teachers and I feel mm-hmm. like police officers are like the, the male stereotypical teachers, if that makes sense. Sure. The slightest yeah, sure. bit, like we get the same stereotypes but like opposite like Mm -hmm. all the all the mean girls go into teaching you know all the bad teachers indoctrinating their kids and blah 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 and then police officers all the guys who peaked in high school kind of thing like you know what i mean (laughs) that's the stereotype yeah i mean there's some truth to that you know but the majority of the people that i work with when those incidences come to light we're all on the same like we're on the same page that was wrong yeah. That could be dealt differently. Yeah. And it wasn't like that one incident. It's, oh, that's been happening for a while now. Yes. It just finally came pattern. out. Right. And so I've not met one police officer that says, that's it. You know, that was that's like, that's how way. you handle it. That's no. how we do it. That's not the majority of what Good. I encounter every single day, which is great. Yeah. And most absolutely. people don't see that. And they don't, they choose to not believe that version of police officers. They're, they're good police officers out there. Mm-hmm. Like bottom line. Yeah. So. Well, one of my, as I told you before we even started recording, one of my uh, best friends of of 15 years, her mom, Mama Smith, we call her Fanita. That's sure. her name. <laughs> uh, but she was a police officer, yeah, yeah. career pre- police officer. And I remember um, when I first started the podcast, she's like, are, are you going to do a police officer episode? And I was like, <laughs> um, maybe. Yeah, and like I you're know, a little nervous, right? Because yes, you, so you're going to get backlash. Exactly. Yeah. And then I met you and I was like, no, this is the guy. Sure, this sure. This is the one. <laughs> so, I mean, that's kind of where like where I made my videos. Yeah. Because I wanted to bring, I don't know, maybe a lighter side to the police officer. Absolutely. You know, job or the career. Yeah. You know, and like getting into law enforcement, I thought, man, where can I find this content? And there's content out there. Like there's great educational content, but it wasn't like geared towards towards someone like me. If, yeah. if that makes sense. So I, I thought, you know, I'm going to start making it myself and try to, I guess, inspire other people. And before I got into the journey of the academy and what that was like, I was, you know, filming and posting, hey, this is what I'm going through. This is what you're going to go through, like specifically the steps, you know, and all the different phases. And that has, you know, that boded well with people. So your content media. was geared towards individuals who wanted to become police officers. So if, showing them what they were getting into. Right. If we, and if we go back, like, but even before then, because I had a pretty big following already when I was a police officer, like in the process of being a police officer. Okay. It was because of spin art. And oh, that was like. spin art? So, <laughs> which is crazy because spin art back in 2020 during COVID. Uh-huh. I was doing this thing where I would put a canvas on a drill oh, and put paint on it, right? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, I loved spin art as a kid. Yes. And so I did that with a drill and I filmed it and it went like mega viral. So I, wow. I gained a pretty okay, you know, following because of that. Yeah. And then I was like, hey, talking to my wife, Sarah, what if I became a police officer? Not for, you know, just wow. for fun, but like I've always wanted to be in law enforcement because, you know, I... Grew up in, you know, somewhat of an unstable home. Mm-hmm. And just like that kind of contributes to a lot of reasons why police officers get into this field. And I want to help, you know, domestic violence, you know, violence victims and go through all that. And so I went and applied. And then I realized I'm going through YouTube and social media asking what's going to happen next after my initial interview. I didn't realize there was a, a chief interview. 
I didn't realize I was going to get, you know, a, a test of 600 plus questions asking, are you a psychopath or are you not a psychopath? <laughs> like a bunch of different questions and versions of the same question, wow. you know, and then a polygraph. I didn't know any of that was going to happen even in my YouTube searching. So I started making that content and it, oh, I think wow. it was going viral because I had that previous following with spin art. Yeah. So thank you. Spin art. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I love that's So interesting. So, and I know people who aren't in it just don't know, like, I don't know what does like police Academy consist of. You said it consists of like, are you a psychopath questions, mm -hmm. polygraphs? Like what do you really learn in police Academy? That's very open question. Yes. Okay. And okay. So, Give no, me no, the no. gist. No, Give definitely. me the gist. Yeah. So in the Academy, they tell us like when we get out of the Academy, Hey, what you learn in the Academy it, you're going to forget about it. <laughs> That's and, what Siri and I were I talking mean, about beauty Honestly, school. yeah. Like you forget a lot of the stuff that you learned in the academy because it's not about tactics. It's not about, you know, what you're going to do on this certain call. It's more of a, a general basis to get you into the department. Right. Right. And so it's kind of like the prereq. Mm -hmm. And in the academy, mine was, I think, uh, four, four months, four and a half months total. And then after the academy, I went into this like pre- I guess my department academy for about three and a half weeks. They kind of give us a lowdown, the, you know, the the vision, the characteristics of what they want in a police officer. And then they send you out into field training. And that was about three months. And field training is where I'm in the car and I'm with someone else. They're my field trainer. And their only job is to teach me and guide me. And hopefully I don't die like on the job because you're <laughs> no. a police officer day one of that car. Like you're in the car, oh, you're, so you're taking calls, you're learning how it works you're learning how to take different calls. And so going back to the academy, it's more of like generalized, hey, this is law here in this state. This is what you do. This is what you'll expect. Also, do you really want to do this? Because you might die. Yeah. And they'll, they'll show you videos, like pretty graphic videos that it's not open to the public. And be like, hey, this, is, this is the aftermath of that call. Do you want to do this? Do you want to leave your family, wow. your wife and kids behind for this? Very low paying job to yeah. help people. And, you know, we had guys that quit because of that. And we had some guys quit because the physical was too much or they couldn't keep up. And it can be physically demanding, but depending on the department and depending on the academy you go to, like it all is going to vary. No, you know? absolutely. So my, I, th I think that's better. Sorry, I got no, no. ADHD brain. No, you're <laughs> fine. Ahead, I was going to say ahead. like for, you know, being a trooper or a state police officer, that's, I believe, six or seven months. And like, that's pretty grueling. You know, I'm a, I'm a police officer in the city, so that was about three and a half months of the academy. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's better to, like, show those officers or those pre-officers, whatever you would call them. Recru like, recruits. Recruit, yeah. Show the recruits, like, hey, this is really what you're getting into. Like, mm -hmm. that's good because if, right. they're, if, they're not, if they're not in it, you know, that's – that's it. Yeah. You don't, you don't want those kinds of people on the job anyways. You right. want people who are focused, who are really going to be able to help people. Cause there's already so many that slip through the cracks that shouldn't be there, but are, you don't sure. want more than that's yeah, necessary. Definitely. I'm also rambling. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> it's fine. So when it comes to like, we, we talked a lot about how like some people have very strong opinions about police officers mm -hmm. and you were telling me that about a school visit that you had. Yeah. So Tell recently me a about that. I went to my son's school and I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe kids being happy, you know, even or indifferent. Like, yeah, yeah. Even indifference indifferent would be fine. But my first experience with these kids where they were like terribly afraid of me. Oh. I mean, because of the uniform, not because of me, right. you know, no, Johnny, yeah, for sure. but because of like what I was wearing, the badge that was on my outer carrier and the gun on my hip. And it was weird to see and crazy to see the, the kids that would point out, hey, is that your gun? Do you shoot people? And hey, what's that thing on your vest? And it's like a body camera. Like there was different versions of, of these kids asking different questions and they, would, they wouldn't want to talk to me. Some kids would yeah. stand in the corner and they didn't want to take a badge or you know, a sticker badge. Yeah. And they didn't want it because I brought donuts. They didn't want a donut. You know, and oh. I was like, hey, guys, like anybody can have a donut. If you want a sticker badge, you can be a junior officer today. And then, you know, as I kind of told them what I do and like what we do in the city, then it was more like they kind of opened up. I feel you like know? once they started seeing you as a person, I feel like that happened. Because yeah. I feel like at, at first, you know, it's just the just general idea of a police officer right. into a lot of people, especially children, depending on what kind of backgrounds they have. That can be very scary and that can be very frightening. Right. But I feel like once 
you kind of humanized yourself to them. No, definitely. And yeah. I was talking, you know, they had asked, do you arrest people all the time? Well, no, not all the time. Sometimes people need to talk to police officers. Sometimes we take care of problems. Sometimes we hear a lot of people just ramble on and ask, hey, do you want my help? And they're like, no. Okay. <laughs> well, I just needed someone to talk to you. Great. You know, how can we settle this tonight? How can we move forward? And then, you know, sometimes, yeah, some people need to get arrested because they're doing bad things in the city and we keep people like you safe. You know, that's why your mom and dad go back home and they shut the door at night. They lock all the doors. They make sure their cars are locked. They make sure you're safe. That makes our job easier if someone's trying to break in, right? And then we talked about, you know, safety or safety. And if you were in trouble, what do you call? 911. They all blurted it out at the same time, which is, it was adorable. It was very Aww. cute. But I mean, again, it was just crazy and eye-opening to see the kids that were very afraid of me. Yeah. And then throughout, you know, the interaction, like, well, he may not be so bad, you know? So that was just, it's, it's crazy to see those, yeah. those things in children. Yeah. Because when I was a kid, like a police officer would come to our school, everybody would love this police officer, you know, and like ask amazing questions and like be really funny, but it was really distant in that visit. Indifferent. Do you think that like the, the public opinion on police officers, do you think it has been decreasing so badly lately because these horrible influence instances are happening more often? Or do you think it's because more people are aware of them? I think all of the above Okay. because of the social media. I think okay. all of that coming up all at once. And, you know, with these videos, and I'm not saying every single video, but some of these videos, there's, you know, a, another side to this story that we don't know. Yeah. You know, we, we get the images on these phones and that's all we get. And then we make our opinion, we comment and then we leave. But there's a whole different set of processes that go with that that video you're seeing, you know, mm -hmm. like someone's going to get arrested. There's going to be a trial, right? There's going to be lawyers involved. There's going to be witnesses. There's going to be a ton of reports. Like it just, there's a lot that needs to happen in order for someone to actually be either guilty or not guilty. Right. And then we, as a public see those and we think, oh, that was bad. That's honestly, that cop was, it's just so bad. Didn't do the right thing. And so because of those instances, yeah, I think we get a lot of immediate Oh, no, that's that's a no-go for me. That's why I distrust police. That's why I don't like police, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, and I, I feel like there's there's so much people might not know about the things that go on behind the scenes. Like one mm -hmm. person sent me a story, and this is the one that I was telling you about. It's, it's a devastating story. It's mm -hmm. very upsetting. Um, but there is a police officer who, like, as soon as he started working for the day, as soon as he turned on his radio, there were already calling for officers onto the scene of a car crash. Mm -hmm. um, and he was not close, but he was still the closest one to it. So he automatically started driving towards it. Um, and when he got there on scene, there was a, a brutal car crash. Um, there was a car full of five people, mostly kids that were not mm -hmm. wearing seatbelts. And as soon as he got on, he and the, the doctors showed up very shortly after him. There was nothing anyone could do. Mm -hmm. um, and the hardest part for him in that moment was that he do, did a lot of school visits as well. And he recognized one of the little girls mm. as one of the kids from the elementary school he just visited. And he just kind of held her as she passed because he didn't. there was nothing else he could do. Right. And it just destroyed him and it, it impacted him to the point that he felt like he needed to go to the memorial and the funeral so he went yeah, definitely um not in uniform or anything mm -hmm. but just went because he felt like that's what he should do well no one there knew who he was or anything like that nor should they mm -hmm. um but the father who wasn't in the car so he was the only uh, family member that survived tough yeah um yeah. was just sobbing obviously and but ranting and raving about how I heard there was this officer who got to the scene and he didn't do anything to save my family and I bet he could have saved them and he just chose not to and this is his fault and he lost and like this officer just had to sit there and hear that and the dad did not know that mm -hmm. there genuinely was nothing that could be done he's just grieving you yeah, know he's right. in grief he's in the anger stages of the grief process but I can't even imagine how gut-wrenching that must have, I don't think I said that word right, but it's okay. Yeah, How yeah. gut-wrenching that right. must have felt to sit there and hear this father blame him mm -hmm. for when like he wished he could have done something 
and there was nothing that he could do. And I feel like that just kind of, you know, contributes to this stereotype that like, oh, cops don't care about people and they don't want to do anything. But like, there's not always something that they can do. And that's so unfortunate. And that's so devastating. And I can't, I can't even imagine being that officer sitting there listening to that. Yeah, I mean, uh, this job will prepare you to just kind of take crap from people. You know, even if I've been there where I've been getting yelled at and I've done nothing wrong and I'll get name called for, I mean, every single name in the book you can think of, I've been called that. And I'm, I'm just here to help you. How can I help you? What is going on? And they don't want my help or they're just too much in their head and they're, you know, they're just fighting with this other person and they just don't see it. Right. So I can understand like how that would definitely, definitely suck for someone. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll never forget. Um, I don't know why this story just kind of popped into my brain mm-hmm. as it just did. Um, but the the only time I've really had a serious interaction with a police officer was actually at school. Um, I, I vividly remember like being at lunch duty in the cafeteria and, you know, just watching. I taught high school. So, like, okay. of course, the kids yeah. are crazy. So you're a teacher. I like, was, you're yes. not in trouble, like, no, as a kid. No, 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 okay, no, no, I was like, no, no, no. what, you start a food fight or something? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, I was, this is while I was teaching. Yeah, yeah. Um, And I was on lunch duty. The high schoolers are always crazy during lunch, you right. know, oh, yeah. teenagers. And I just... I will never forget. So we had an SRO officer. She's Mm -hmm. wonderful. I love her. And I know that the school prison pipeline is like a whole other thing, but she's phenomenal. Um, And I'll never forget this look on her face of just terror, but trying to cover it up. You know what I mean? Sure. Like I could see it in her eyes, but the rest of her face was composed. Mm -hmm. And she just came up to me and she asks, have you seen the principal? And I said, no, I've just been on duty right is he in his office i i guess and i just see her beeline to the front office which is like maybe 15 feet from me sure and within three minutes we get a um intercom to the whole school saying um this is not a drill we're under a code red lockdown everyone get to a classroom immediately oh dang and like that's crazy how often do you do you practice for a drill during lunch Right. You know, I mean, you, you probably don't. Right. Maybe that one time no, no per one's ever year. thought about yeah. it. Like we we've done active like we've done drills, like mm-hmm. lockdown drills. But it's always like when we're in a class and the teacher shows us where to go. Mm-hmm. These are and I I taught at a school that had what more than fifteen hundred students. Yeah. Um, Half of which are right now in the cafeteria mm-hmm. at lunch. Where where do you put that? So I mean, what, what happened? So with that? it was chaos absolute chaos mm-hmm. there was i i felt like a good 10 seconds of shock of like oh oh okay and then i just kind of had to snap myself out of it i my room was like down the hall and around the corner mm-hmm. so and i knew that i had students in my room hanging out during lunch so i just knew i need to get to my room so i can get to those kids right. and lock the door and as i went i was just shoving kids into classrooms as i was going especially there were a few that like if they knew me they would like come and grab my arm and they're like where do i go and i'm like in here immediately yeah, go, to a room, go right. now um but you so, had no information at this point no, it was n- just literally you're just, on code red you got to go to exactly. a room and that's it and i was one of the only adults that even saw our sro officer yeah. um like look that terrified mm-hmm. um so i don't even know i don't i don't even know what other teachers might have been thinking at that moment i just remember like my only train of thought was Get to your classroom, shove as many kids into rooms as you possibly can, and shut the door. So I finally got to my classroom, and um, there was another teacher in there as well. We shared a classroom. I had some – I had a couple of my cheerleaders in there. I had some of my model UN kids in there. I just had some kids that were just in there for smart lunch or anything like that. And uh, we just shut the door, locked it down. After a good five or ten minutes, we passed out textbooks And the Mm -hmm. kids were like, what is this for? And I said, it's for holding in front of your body because what else do you do just in case? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to prepare you that we don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure that you're okay. Mm -hmm. And then I took the fire extinguisher off the wall and I handed it to the other teacher. And I said, if anyone opens the door, I just want you to spray. And I grabbed uh, those, you know, those big scissors 
Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, I yeah. grabbed four pairs mm-hmm. and I put them between my knuckles and I just sat by the door. That's wild. I <laughs> that know. That's crazy. I like now I can look back and I'm like, man, I felt like Wolverine. But in the moment, like right. my only thought process was like, hey, no way anything is happening to these kids right, right. on my watch, which is scary. Um, terrifying because like I didn't sign up to do that. Right. You did. Right. I did. I did well, not I mean, sign up to do and that. And that's crazy. Not crazy that you say that, but it's. Funny because the teachers shouldn't think like that, right? Like it should be a safe space yes, for kids. And exactly. Unfortunately, right now it isn't, you know, and any school in America is privy to anything like that. Yes. And so the fact that he did that is honestly great, you know, because I don't know, most teachers may. My fight or flight you know, is 100% fight. Right. Hands down. And like, that's good. And, I know that. And it's it also, to be very honest, transfers over to police officers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Some cops just don't know what to do. Like I said, the academy trains you to hold the baton, strike right. something and say, get back, get back. I have never once in my career so far have I said, here's my baton. I'm striking the suspect and saying, get back, get back. <laughs> that just, it doesn't happen like that. Right. That'd be terrible if someone saw that, right? Exactly. Well, yeah. We don't do that. Yeah. And officers also uh, can be in the same boat and you have to, you know, maybe train yourself or force yourself to, hey, this is a situation. This is what is being demanded of me. Like, I have to go do it. You know, Absolutely. I have to go do this and keep people safe. So. Absolutely. Yeah. No. What, what was the outcome of? Um, It ended up. So there's a few. Did did the school actually give us an update of what happened? No. Were there a few things going on, like a few rumors between all the teachers? Yes. Gotcha. So I, there were a few. Do I know exactly what happened? No. I don't even know because, like, some of— Just something happened. Yes. And it was real enough where— Well, so what—something what, that did happen is that, you know, as some some kids were coming, walking back onto campus mm-hmm. um, from lunch, um, the school was right near, like, a neighborhood. So there was a, a woman sitting on her porch watching some kids who were coming back onto campus who became very concerned about something she thought they were holding. Gotcha. Um, I have no idea what it was or was not. Again, there were lots of rumors going around mm-hmm. between all the teachers. I don't actually know what happened, mm-hmm. but I do know that a woman who was sitting on her porch what became very concerned about what some kids were holding as they were walking onto campus. Gotcha. And that's all I know. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that would that would warrant, you know, whatever yeah. response. Yeah. You know, well, so did you hear about uh the there was a teacher who ended up getting shot by her student. Did you hear about what's going on with the I, court cases of that? Not the court cases, but I did hear just a little bit yes. of that. So, uh, like a few months back or something? Um, this was I think it was a year ago. Okay. Maybe more than that. Um Time goes by so fast, sure. that, you know, yeah. so it, it could have been two years ago. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was last year. Um, but pretty much there was a teacher who teaches elementary school. Mm-hmm. I think she had six year olds. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Anyone. Um, sure. But there was a student who had like verbally threatened her mm-hmm. and she told admin and they're like, it's fine. He's not going to. It's fine. And she's like, no, no. Actually, I did hear about this. And yep. she like mm-hmm. kept bringing it up. Yep. And right? she kept bringing it up. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, and again, I could be wrong. I feel like he said, I'm going to bring a weapon or she mm. knew he had one or something along those lines. I don't actually know. And she told admin and they're like, no, it, no way. You're fine. Right. Well, then he stood up in the middle of class and he shot her. Um, That's wild. Through like, her hand, through her chest, mm-hmm. and she still managed to her first priority was getting the other kids out of the room. Yeah. Um, and the the reason I'm bringing it up now is because um, the school system tried to say that it was a workers' comp issue. Um, that really? it should be deemed as a reasonable risk that teachers should understand when they come onto the job that that is something that could happen. That's crazy. Isn't that, that wild? Is like, that is very wild. And, and just this <laughs> right. week, the judge ruled no. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're not there to fight, right. you know, there's, crime, right? There's no reason. There's no reason that teachers should have to fear that happening that that right. shouldn't be happening right um and we were actually like the whole anyone teachers teacher community whatever was actually a little nervous because he was supposed to give 
the decision on one day. Mm -hmm. And then he actually said he needed more time to think. So he like took an extension sure. and everyone was like, why do you need an extent? Why, right, why, why, right. why do you need that? that yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> Which like that, I mean, I know they're just kids, but even kids, when you're on the job, like it's hard to, you know, I guess be different because you kind of have to be different as a police officer versus, oh, I'm out with my family or I'm out, you know, getting groceries. Right. Like I just, I don't trust people. I, I really don't when I'm on the job. And even now, I'm, I mean, maybe it's just because I've, I've been on, right? And I see that, you know, my first, I guess, six months, I was, okay, I'll trust everybody because people are good, right? I, people are good. Very quickly did I realize people no. will lie to you. <laughs> people will tell you one thing and be like, oh, this is what actually happened. And you'd be like, oh, well, he, what? Like, you just lied to me. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, you know, and in the same sense, police officers can also lie to you trying to get, further into the case and try to, you know, yes, I guess, yes. crack the case, right? Or yes. kind of get the suspect. But yeah, I mean, that's just crazy. Like teachers have to watch out. Not only right. do you have to right. 30 kids and we have to teach them all these things and curriculum or curriculum, and then we have to also potentially not die. Why? Absolutely. It, why. it is wild. Like, and I, I feel like th there's so many stories that I want to bring up to you because like, there's no reason that this should have happened at a school. And like, I would love a police officer's take on it. Cause like, sure, it's right, right. crazy, but there's so many. I'm like, I could, I could talk about it forever. Like, yeah. <laughs> let me tell you the craziest thing that I ever sure. saw at a school that I, I know police officers got involved. There's no way that they didn't. Sure. Wow. This is the wildest thing. Okay. So I was student teaching, right? Okay. Yep. Student teaching. And where I was student teaching, um, I wasn't in the actual building. I was in um, the, a pod. So for anyone that doesn't sure. know what a pod is, it's basically like a mini building that has like six to eight classrooms in it. And um, so I just remember being there after school with my CT, my cooperative teacher, mm -hmm. and the counselor comes in to talk to my teacher. And she looks at me and she goes, can I ask your student teacher a question? And my CT was like, yeah. And she looked at me. She goes, you don't know me, right? I said, no. She said, hmm. so if I were to tell you that I would give you $100 to come to my car and get something for me, would you do it? And I just paused and I was very confused. Sure, right. And I was like, I mean, I guess. And she said, why? And I said, because your staff at this school. So like, I trust you're not going to kidnap me. And she goes, okay, well then that doesn't count. And I said, what do you mean? And mm -hmm. she said, okay, so apparently what happened that day during school is a grown man came and parked right outside the pod building where we sure, were, right. got out of his car, walked into the school through one of the side buildings and just was circulating the school during class changes, approached six to eight different kids mm -hmm. and said, hey, um, if you come to my car really quickly, I'll give you a hundred bucks. It's right out there. Super fast. You'll be, you'll be back in time to go to class. Don't worry. No one will even know you're gone. And most of them did it. And they went to this stranger's car and he handed them each a hundred dollar bill. And he told them each, now go ahead and give me your phone number. Cause I'm going to be back later this mm. week. And when I come back, I'll triple that if you bring one of your little female friends with you. Yeah, that's a no-go. Mm -hmm. That's no. Nope. And no. out of the six to eight kids, how many do you think said yes? All of them, right? Most. How many yeah. do you think actually told an adult? Oh, none. One. One? One that's, told yeah. an adult. And they were like, at first, at first the counselors were like, absolutely no way this happened. And then they went back on the cameras and they saw this guy walking through and they saw kids leaving with him. And the scariest part, too, first of all, I was so afraid to walk to my car by myself mm -hmm. because this guy was parked right outside the pot I was teaching in. But also think about how terrifying it is that there is a park, a park for kids down the street. And this guy decided it was more secure and safe to do this, try to set up this trafficking ring at the high school instead of the park. I believe it, 100%. That's I mean, so that terrifying. happens every day, though. And that's the thing. Like, people just don't see it or they don't want to believe it. But it's, like, that's stuff that actually happens. And it's just wild that someone could just, you know, go into a school and start doing that. That's terrifying. <laughs> that, yeah, it is terrifying. That's, I don't, so, like, we, clearly stranger danger is a thing. Yeah. Yes, we know that. There are creepy people 
everywhere, especially this creep coming to school. What advice do you give for to parents? Like the best tips and tricks, not, not necessarily tips and tricks, but like advice to what are the best ways to keep your kids safe nowadays? Like what do you recommend? That is crazy. <laughs> I, I, people are going to have some opinions, but like we okay. have air tags on our kids, right? We have air tags that tracks them where they're going. You know, at least because they're little, right? They don't have phones. Yeah. They, they can't take a phone with them. And for what, eight hours out of the day, I don't see them. They're in this building where I know potentially now is a risk to yeah. everybody in there plus my kids. So, like, honestly, I just talk to my kids and I, I freely ask, hey, what happened at school? Is there anything weird at school? And they know what that means. They know that weird is, oh, well, you know, so and so, like, a man came into school. Like, that's not, that's not normal. That's they not know normal, that's right? weird. Yeah, but yeah. I guess that communication between kids and parents is very important because they will tell you what's going on, right? And if I guess if you're mean to your kids, they won't tell you anything because you're just mom and dad yeah. <laughs> yelling at them. But, you know, we air tag. If your kids have, you know, they have phones, track them. Like if you want to have a phone under my roof, you're going to get tracked because of these reasons. And don't, I mean, this maybe is a more parent side, but don't tell them that's what you're going to do. Right. Tell them why we're doing this, right? <laughs> the, you're like going to a school is now dangerous. I want to make sure you're safe because if something does happen, you can call me and we can make sure, you know, everything happens in the way it and should. And you know exactly right? where they are. Right. Yeah. If anything ever goes wrong and like the air tag is genius. Mm -hmm. I don't have any kids or anything like that. So like I, my opinion is. Air tag, the shoes, put them in the shoes, duct tape it, you know, put it in the backpack. Air tag your kids. My brother does that to his fur baby. <laughs> his, there you his go. Collar like, has an air tag on there it. There you go. But he's a runner. Sure. He's a runner. He's a track star. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's just that's like such a hard question too. Yeah. Because you, like, I want and I want to make sure my kids are safe, but I'm also entrusting the faculty and staff at the school. Yeah. But I know that they don't have any kind of training. Yeah, we're not trained to do that. They're, they're yeah, not, yeah, yeah. I don't think they're even allowed to carry guns. Yeah, no, we're not. We, we've talked enough about sad stuff. So do you have a story or anything that comes to your mind of like the most rewarding experience you've had on the job? So I've had a lot of them, okay. right? But oh, I, can't, I can't like go into detail yeah, yeah, on this yeah. one. But you know, we care about people's privacy. No, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said before, I got into police work because of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. I want to help victims. And on this one call, like I did that and Aww. we helped this, this victim from this pretty bad situation. And it was at the courthouse where I went to testify where she said, Hey, it's you like that police officer who helped me. Like you pulled me out of that house. And like that guy was really bad at me and he was doing all these things, but like you actually helped me. So like you saved my life. And I just, I, she caught me off guard. Like Aww. I didn't know she was there. Uh, cause I got called into this room and she just like, you know, bombarded me with all this kindness. And I thought, whoa, that like is legit. Like that's, I, I mean, I didn't do that specifically. It was me and the help of other cops. Right. But she remembers but me because so, yeah. I was, I was there and I was primary, uh, taking the entire investigation. But like, I remember just thinking, oh, wow. I asked her all the questions. We went through all that stuff. I finally, you know, I made the proper arrest and now she's getting the help that she needs, like proper help. And that was like that was very rewarding because I got into it because of that. And now I'm helping those same people get out of a situation. That's amazing. You know? And there's police officers all around the country that do the exact same thing. I love that. Oh, yeah. my God. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> That's so sweet. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Now I have to ask, do you have any more of those stories? Because I'm obsessed with those. It's uh, okay if you can't think of it. Yes, I do. Okay. Also, okay. One, like one thing, like SVU is not real. No. It's, no, it's not a real that. thing. And I love SVU. <laughs> Olivia Benson. Olivia no. Benson. She's my jam. Like I all that. I love Olivia Benson. This is not, it's not the same thing. Oh, that's so It's not real. Criminal Minds? No. Oh. It, it's just not the same. That's like so there's sad. certain aspects of, cer of certain shows, like <laughs> The Rookie. Have you seen okay. The Rookie? No, I need to start it. Okay. I need to start it. You don't really need to start it, I, but like the oh. first season is like the first five, six episodes of, you know, recruits, field training, police officer. Like that stuff is pretty on par. Okay. But okay. after after all that, you don't get into shootouts every single day. And okay. yeah, I get maybe in LA you do, but you don't go right back to work the next day. Like there's certain things that you have to go through and like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> right. Yeah. Because of course the TV is not going to show you like taking care of your mental health. And if, like So like if TV shows were actually like police work, it would show here's a call. Here's what happened. And the majority of the time of the show would be report writing. 
So most of like how what, what percent of, of your time is like writing reports like and like all desk of it. work? Oh, like ninety <laughs> percent of my work is report writing. Really? Something happened, a crime was committed. I helped either solve it or I it did these steps to help solve it. Sometimes it never gets solved, and then I write a report on that what what I did. So like a typical day as a police officer, ninety percent is just sitting at a desk writing. No, okay. So let, let me backtrack. Okay, okay. Uh, I get in at six p.m. from six to one or two in the morning. I'm working on calls. Oh, you I work go. Nights. I go to calls. Oh. oh yeah, I love Ooh. nights. Nights is the way to go. Oh. And I'll go to different calls. I'll probably stack up maybe one, two, three reports at a time, depending on what the calls are. Okay. And then from like two to three uh, to 6 a.m., I'm writing those reports. Oh, wow. And if something major happens, I'm breaking from report writing and then going to take care of that call. And then coming back, staying late, and writing reports. So, like, it's a it's lot of report writing. It's mostly writing. If something happened oh, bless. and it's worth a report, you're writing about it in a report. Oh, bless. So it's report writing. So if you're really good at grammar and English and proper writing, then go be a police officer. <laughs> you'll, you'll love it. You'll love it. It's all about writing and typing. Well, not like actual writing, yeah. but like typing on a computer. Yeah. It's a lot of it. Oh my gosh, I can't. Yeah. I want to know like the cool parts of your job, like the fun parts, like the parts that people might not oh, know oh, about. Man. Like um, what's cool? I have to be very careful how I say this. That's okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I was in the academy, uh, our instructor asked us, why do you want to be police officers? Uh-huh. And he had us, you know, go through entire the entire room. We got up, we said our name, and why I wanted to be a police officer. I said because I wanted to help people. Mm-hmm. Everybody said that. Right. The instructor then said, "That's all BS. You didn't want to. You didn't want to become a police officer for that. You want to be. A, uh, you want to be a police officer to drive fast and run a gun." And like <laughs> everybody laughed, but to an extent, like that's. That's like, that's the fun part. You get to drive fast in a car when you need to, right? Yes. When it's an emergency. Right. Yeah. And just a disclaimer, if you see a police officer be- behind you with his lights on going really fast, move over. <laughs> you, you, Do people not? You would be surprised that people, as I'm going down the highway with my lights on and sirens, they don't move. They, do, they will just sit in the left lane and just sit there. They'll keep going. Oh, they're, oh, they're going to stop in, in right in front of us. And no. then I have to weave around them and nobody moves. It, it's a bizarre <laughs> thing, but I'm like, oh, surely, like my first time that I put up my lights and sirens in field training, I'm like, surely they're going to move. My field training said, get out of this lane and go around them. And I said, but they're going to move. And he said, no, they're oh. not. I yeah. thought it was like illegal to not move. I mean, what am I going to do? Pull over and, hey, write him a ticket. Like, <laughs> I know I'm I in have the middle to go, of right? an emergency, no. but. But people do not move. And it is crazy. And I just, that was like the most eye opening thing to me, like right out of, you know, the academy and just seeing, oh, people don't really care. Like, people don't care that you're behind them. Wow. You know? Okay. I need more of these. I need more of these. I love this. Um, So if you ask for someone's, <laughs> it's really funny because, um, I was checking on someone at night. Uh-huh. Uh, they were in a building and they called us. Someone called us saying, hey, they don't, we don't want them here. They're trespassing. Okay. Great. So I go up to this guy and there's nobody in the car from what I see. And as I'm going around, you know, the car, uh, someone gets out of the car. Oh. And I'm checking other cars. And I, I ask him, hey, what's going on, man? Like, what are you doing here? And that car matched the same car that the person gave us. Okay. They're in this car. It's this, you know, they, they look like this. That same guy gets out, and I ask him, hey, what's your name? Um, he gives me a name. Uh-huh. I'm like, okay, how do you spell that? <laughs> and he goes, he, what is it? He says, oh, I'm, no, I'm sorry. He gives me his name. He spells it out, and I said, hey, what's your social security number? Because we also get socials, right, to yeah. run people and make sure they're that person. He goes, I don't, I'm dyslexic. I don't, I don't know what that is. I can't tell you. And I was like, that was like a red flag, right? Because people know what? They know their names. They know how to spell names. They know their phone numbers and their address. Like basic pedigree information. Yes. When someone doesn't tell you what their social is, that's a red flag. That's either, hey, they might have a warrant or they're, you know. I didn't know police um, officers asked for your social security number. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I'm working on a case and you're, let's say you're the victim, uh-huh. I want all the pedigree information from you. Okay. So I can document it properly in our system and into the report. Interesting. And so like that stuff, you know, officers are wanting to get because that, that just helps everybody else. Yeah. Right. And even with suspects, it's the same thing. And so this person, if I'm going to trespass this person, I need their information. So if they don't come back and if they do come back, well, you might get arrested. And this person 
said, yeah, I'm, I'm dyslexic. I don't know. I don't know what my social is. Well, that's not. That's, that's not, not that's a thing. Not that's that not works. a thing. You know your social, just how you know your birth date and you know your phone number. Like yeah. basic stuff. You know, this guy obviously had a warrant. So, oh you know, he went, he went to jail, but like it's just stuff like that that I didn't know. Where if someone doesn't tell you yeah. what the basic pedigree is, well, there's something up. There's a, something. Wow. There's something suspicious going on. So, do you think what other misconceptions do you think that like the general public has about police officers? This might be, I don't know. This might be edgy. Okay. But all police officers are not racist. Like ninety nine percent of police officers are not. Okay. Are not about that, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it's we a, said earlier. Yeah, it, like the, the bad apples. Yeah. They, I always say bad apples because that's my well, law That's a real thing. Content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. we learned that in the academy. Like those are, those are bad apples. Yes. And the majority of people that get into law enforcement want to help people because they see there's a need in the community. Yeah. Right? Like me going to a school is not for show. It's for, I see that my kids are hanging with other kids that, you know, maybe we should probably be a, a good service to the school. Yeah. Right. And be a community service. Like that's what community policing is. Yeah. Getting out of your car, going through the neighborhoods, knocking on people's doors and on people's businesses and asking, hey, how can I help you? Like, what's the thing that we can do to help you? Right. Oh. And like, that's all like gray and soft, but like it needs to happen. And some guys don't want to do that because they want to catch bad guys, go fast, run and gun. And that's okay too. Like we need everybody. We need people in different departments. We need people... To do a lot of different things. You Someone know? Uh, sent me a story mm-hmm. about how uh, they were driving and they didn't think they were speeding or anything like that, mm-hmm. but they saw lights come on behind them and they automatically like, what did I do? I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. And they got, they got really nervous and they pulled over um, and the police officer came over and said, ma'am, uh, did you know that uh, you're breaking rule, whatever code? Right. Nine Some like zero, very blah, blah, specific, blah. yeah, she was ordinance. Like, I don't, I don't know what that is. Like, I don't think I was speeding. And he goes, well, r- rule nine two, whatever, whatever says, uh, if it's this hot outside, you have to have a popsicle. And I don't think you have a popsicle. So I need to give you a popsicle. And he just brought really? out a bunch of popsicles. <laughs> there you go. That's one way kid. to do it though, right? And I guess what he was do what they were doing was they were um they were like very close to a local elementary school. Sure. And they knew that drop off was very or pickup for kids was mm-hmm. very long and it was very hot out, and that a lot of these parents were sitting in their hot cars. Right. So they yeah. were just ready that if it looked like someone wasn't in a hurry, they would like Pull them over to give them a popsicle. <laughs> that's that's one way to do it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to do that one yet. <laughs> and I feel like some people would get really annoyed by that, but I feel like like I would have loved that. Like that's right. really sweet. Yeah. And that like that's you know that's a good way to spend your no, day. Definitely, like definitely. finding a way to just like that's a good story to tell. It's a way to brighten people. I mean, there's always going to be some negative Nellies that are like, I would be so annoyed, but. I think that's really sweet. Yeah. No, it, it is. And that's part of community policing. Yeah. Right. And I I don't know what department wouldn't want community policing. And right. I, like yes. the overall outlook of your police officers. Right. That, you know, live in the city, you know, somewhat and then also help in the city and are employed by the city. Yeah. Like you would want the, those programs to outreach people. Right. Absolutely. And to outreach your, your kids and. And all that. And you want police officers who want to do those things. Like mm-hmm. police officers who are silly enough to like make up a popsicle code. Like those are the kinds of guys that you want on the force, you know? Yeah, so no, definitely. Like someone else sent me another story about how uh, they got their kid. I think it's like the little tykes, like little car things that sure, they, you right. know, you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, and they were, they had her driving down the road and like it was a very... Like there were no cars or anything on the road. So they're like, and it was in the middle of a neighborhood. So it's not like anyone should be driving really fast on the road. And then uh, the police officer turned the corner and saw her and uh, thought they would have a little bit of fun. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. uh, so they pulled her over, the five-year-old, and like, ma'am, can we see license and registration? That's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) And we're just being really silly and gave her stickers. And it was just so sweet, you know, and like- Those are the kinds of officers that should be on the force, you know, the kinds that want to interact with their community in that way and want to like see, oh, they're not too busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's do something fun. Let's do something silly. Like those are the kinds of people that should be there. Yeah. And on the flip side, you you can also like trust those officers to where if something were to happen, 
like they can flip that switch. Yes. And you know, yeah. it's sometimes it's it's hard to talk about, but you do have to flip that switch. Absolutely. From, you know, or you could be very kind and sweet to someone, but in a second, like life could change. Absolutely. You, know? you just never know. Yeah. You never know what's gonna like. There's videos out there where a cop will make a stop, you know, and all of a sudden another car will come out and stop and try to like kill this officer. Yeah. Like that stuff happens, and so yeah, flipping that switch and being self aware is also a, like a major major thing and all right, so let me let me tell you this being self aware the amount of people that do get their car stolen uh-huh or leave things in their car and those things get stolen is very very high mm-hmm. but their cars <laughs> are not locked like yeah. so one piece of advice is Keep Lock your, your car, yeah, locked. In my defense, I know everyone on video can see my guilty face right now. In my <laughs> defense, this is what had happened. Um, so we moved into a, a new house in a new mm-hmm. development, like, and I didn't know this. Sure. So beware, everybody. When there's a new neighborhood going up, um, sometimes when like there aren't locks on the doors yet of the new houses, mm-hmm. there are people who will break into the new builds and steal tools and appliances hmm, and things like. Like I did not even right. know that was a thing. Yeah, was not aware. Yes. Um, yep. there were also people who were taking advantage of. Um, the people moving in who may have like, who are in the process of moving, getting things in and out of the car and forget to lock it. Um, well, I, while we were moving in, I got a call from my mom about Mm -hmm. my childhood cat, Tinkerbell. She was 17. She died. Um, it was time to put her down. I got the call that like, we are putting her down tomorrow. And I was putting her down. Sorry, not died. No, no. Yeah, yeah, no, no. You're fine. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I got the call that we had to put her down Mm -hmm. tomorrow. It's time. She's not okay. And I was just devastated. And I dropped everything that I was doing and just went inside and cried. Didn't even think about the fact that my car was unlocked. Sure. Didn't even cross my mind. We had just gotten married like six months before. Okay. I had our wedding cash in the glove compartment. got stolen? $4,000. And it got stolen? Mm -hmm. Hmm, Weird. (laughs) Weird. I know. <laughs> no. I oh, know. man. That's, and I'm, the best part, though, Avery wasn't even mad at me. He never once raised his voice. He never. Well, that's good. Avery, bless his heart. He literally looked at me. He said, you know what? If $4,000, that's a lot of money. But, you know, if that makes or breaks us in the grand scheme of life. Sure. We weren't doing okay. Right. And that, that's a problem. That's no, a problem no, in definitely. itself. But, but also lock your cars. Yeah, I know. I you do know, it all the like, time now. <laughs> You, I'm the one that I'm like, beep, 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 like, is it locked 14 times? Because if it's not, it's not really locked. <laughs> lock your cars, lock your doors, put a camera up, just maybe yep. just one in the driveway. Yeah. Even if you live in the in, in the safest neighborhood, you just, you never you know. Never know. And I, I've been there where like, this is a safe neighborhood. What is going on? Well, people like to do things. Yeah. People, even even yeah. if they're not criminals, they'll just do it for fun. <sighs> and it's just something that they want to do. And they're telling me, you know, this was in my car and this and this. I'm like, what, do you live out of your car too? I mean, <laughs> I like, do. oh, my car was – so you're telling me your car was stolen. Okay. And they're upset. I'm like, did you leave your car unlocked? Yes. Were the keys in the car? Yes. Oh, no. I mean, yeah. So, it, of course, it's going to get stolen, you know. And <laughs> no. and I'm not trying to bash these people. I, again, right. it's just like let's start, you know, it's general considering yeah. the, the common sense of, hey, I want my things to be safe. Also, let's lock these things. Yeah. Because people out there will do bad things to you. Yeah. And yeah. So, <laughs> Bless their hearts. Yeah. Well, before we end, is there any last minute, anything that you want people to know about police officers or any experiences that you want to share or anything along those lines? I just want to, I mean, I just want to say like the squad that I work with, the police officers I've worked with this year are all, are all on point. I love they're, that. They're not the police officers that, we, you know, we see on these videos. I just know that our guys, the guys that I work with, if they saw that, they would instantly bring it up. Absolutely. They're not the the BS kind of guys where they'll just kind of let it slide. Yeah. No, and I, I love I know that. there's cops out there that are the same all throughout America. Yeah. And, you know, in, in all the departments. Like, there's guys out there, and I think we need more guys to be bold. And yeah. even uh, and men and a female, it. you know, and if you see something, also say something. That, that goes for us, yeah. too, for police officers. Absolutely. You know, because, you know, we're humans, too. At the end of the day, you know, you're just people. They come home and they've seen some pretty bad stuff. And sometimes, like, yeah, it sucks. And that's why we see suicide rates go up with police officers and 
Like it, it just sucks. And it's unfortunate, but I know that there are good police officers out there that want to help that will continue to help and, you know, serve their communities. No, I totally, I relate to some degree because mm-hmm. I know that when I see on the news, everyone going crazy because a teacher somewhere in the middle of Nebraska made a really poor decision. Mm -hmm. It not only makes me angry that that happened. I'm like, gosh, now everyone's going to say all of us do that. And like, so I I can only imagine like what you must feel when you see those things on the news of someone making a really poor decision and what that will do to like you and how that affects your job and how you can do your job. Right. And Um, it's, you know, it's like, like those calls, it's call after call after call. It's kind of the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And you kind of just like, you can't take it anymore. Yeah. Right. And you have to be someone who listens, someone who acts on the law, someone who knows the law. Someone who can like help someone out of the, a, a domestic situation per se. Yeah, You know, absolutely. figure out this burglary. There's a lot of hats that police officers wear that I don't think the general public is is aware. And if they are, it's like they don't really know what it's really like. Right. You know, we have, you know, everyone is understaffed and they're overworked. So even saying, hey, thank you for what you do goes a long way. I know some guys appreciate that very much. And they'll go to the next call and then the next call. I love that. Thank you so much. And thank yeah, you so well, thank much for you. hanging out for well, me today. We appreciate it. Well, thanks yeah, for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. And thank you all for hanging out with us today and hope to see you all next week. Bye, my lovelies.